posterior of the stadium here in Nanning. Nanning also known as the Green City. And one can see why light was fading as we arrived here. But this semi-final tie is beautifully poised at one match apiece. The third match is men's singles and it is the reigning world champion Kento Momota up against the Asian Games bronze medalist Anthony Sinisuka Ginting. And as far as these two players are concerned, well, this will be the 11th meeting between the two and Kento Momota has an incredible record to maintain across Sudaman Cup and Thomas Cup matches in the past. The left-hander from Japan has never lost when playing for Japan in either the Sudaman Cup or the Thomas Cup. There he is, just waiting to be announced into the arena of them warm-up courts in the background. I can tell you he has played 16 matches in total across Sudaman Cup and Thomas Cup. Never lost one. He is the world number one and he is enjoying his 35th consecutive week with that status. Anthony Ginting is also at a career high. His 23rd week at number seven on the world ranking. As far as Ginting is concerned, he has contested four finals throughout his career, winning three of them. As far as Momota is concerned, 28 finals, winning 23. He's already been in five finals this year from only the seven tournaments that he's played. 24 years of age, the reigning world champion, Anthony Ginting, two years younger. So the two players who uh, played against each other in the final of the China Super 1000 event last year, when, of course, Anthony Ginting won on that occasion. In fact, Anthony Ginting was the only player last year to beat uh, the world number one twice within 2018. They are two of the fastest players in the sport of badminton. This man, when he's on form, simply is quicker than any other player on the men's singles court. And I can tell you that the last two, the last time that these two players played against each other was in the final of the Singapore Open. And in the opening game of that, Ginting just was a pace above this man, the reigning world champion, Kento Momota. So, in total, this is the 11th meeting between the two of the previous 10, and Momota has won seven of them. And the last time they met, as I was saying, in the final of the Singapore Super 500 event, Momota coming through 21-13 in the deciding game, having been 8-12 down in the third game. So that's 13 of the last 14 points in that final in Singapore. There we are, there's confirmation of that. An hour and 13 minutes of intriguing badminton in that final. Susan Taylor from Australia is our umpire for this one. Our service judge is from Suriname. So Kento Momota with that incredible record this his sixth match in the Sudman Cup. Three times he played in Dongguan four years ago. He had three wins there. He's had uh, two wins so far this year. As far as Ginting is concerned, well, he's played twice. He played against Toby Penty on Sunday, the very first day of competition when Indonesia beat England 4-1. Then on Wednesday evening, 
against the former world champion. He lost to Victor Axelsen in two straight games. Yesterday's quarter-final against Chinese Taipei, which Indonesia only won 3-2. It all came down to the last match. Jonathan Christie played and lost out to Chao Tian Chen. So for Kento Momota, 24-year-olds had an incredible year last year, 10 finals, winning seven titles. This year, well, he didn't start against Russia. Nishimoto played that one and lost to Malkov in two straight games. But since then, he has played, first of all, against Thailand, uh, where he won a pretty convincing match. And in the quarterfinal yesterday against uh, Li Xia, it was the third match on, and it was the third win of three matches, and that secured the semi-final place when he beat Li Xia in two straight games. So, Steen, these two players, well, if anybody has got a good record last year against Momolta, it's Ginting. Yeah, he uh, he has the speed and the uh, net game to challenge Momota. Um, Ready to play. It's best for him when there's uh, some drift in the arena so that the court is not um, full, so to speak. So it's difficult to play with accuracy to the uh, back court or the sidelines. I guess the uh, result in Singapore was a, a typical example that um, Ginting lost the draw in the final and started on the good side and ended on the not so good side um, the same thing happened in the uh, team event of the asian games whereas in the uh, individual event he uh, coped with that and uh, knocked him to Momota out fairly early in the tournament second round i guess it was indeed it was the second round and for the record, he beat him 19 and 11. Quarterfinal in those Asian Games, Ginting beat Chen Long, the Olympic champion. Yeah, he sort of uh, paved the way for uh, Jonathan Christie in, uh, in many ways uh, lost the semi final to Cho Chen Chen. And on my left, Japan, represented by Kento Momota. Japan to serve. Love all. Play. Well, a good start for Momolta. just wide. Now, Steen, on Wednesday, when Indonesia played the second of their group ties against Denmark, which Denmark ended up winning 3-2, Ginting lost to Victor Axelsen, and you and I watched that match. Yeah. And I've just given the big build-up about Anthony Ginting being the fastest player in, in world the badminton. The kryptonite. <laughs> You and I didn't think he was moving that quickly on Wednesday. No, uh, that was a big disappointment that match, and uh, um, it's 
several um, theories as to why it was. There were some unfortunate uh, incidents happening in Jakarta. And Indonesia had already uh, secured their quarterfinal berth. Um, and it's also a case that he might be in a um, training period where stamina is being um, emphasized. I was, I was disappointed with that match and playing that way, he cannot beat Momota today. I'm positive about that. So um, Jonathan Christie was selected yesterday against um, Cho Chin Chen and um, he didn't play well either. He lost for the first time in uh, six matches against uh, Cho and he lost easily. So um, I'm not so certain that the Indonesian men's singles are in um, really good shape. We also see a totally different strategy from uh, Ginting here than we normally see. We normally see him uh, attacking and uh, smashing and following up on the net. This is rally playing. Uh, that's super long, hard rally. Jonathan Christie, yeah. right in the front, some full of record. Lost to Cho Tien Chen, 11 and 13. You said it was easy. Totally easy. And it would also have made sense to select him oh. today if he was in particularly good shape because he's actually one of the three players who's beaten Momota this year. sort of attacking play that we've come to expect and love to see from Anthony Ginting.
quite the style we're used to. to score fairly uh, easy when he uh, chooses to attack Anthony Ginting. Um, he's playing much more patient in the rallies and not afraid to play longer rallies, but when he gets the chance, he still has the sting. And um, I wonder if that's a strategy to become better at conserving energy when playing uh, Kento Momota. court. Park also looked a little shaken there. How can you miss it that big? Suddenly picks up speed on the front court there. Ginting. Yeah. Good shot. And good follow up. And it's all good. Challenge here from Mamota. No, I thought he raised no. his arm. But. The umpire hasn't raised her arm. No, that was in. It would have been a wasted challenge. I honestly thought he raised his arm as if he mm. was challenging. Might have been to keep his balance. Could have been. This is quality badminton. Yeah, he's missed it. It's very interesting, in my opinion, because. Uh, <clears throat> of Ginting's um, strategy here to um, not be afraid to play rallies. That's totally um, opposite as the way he played in um, Asian Games, the way he played in, um, is it Malay? No, it wasn't Malaysia, it was China Open. Last year, you mean? He defeated him. Yeah. 
in the final. Um, and it could also be sort of adapting to the um, playing conditions here, which um, doesn't help players who uh, attack mindlessly. Um, so it's got to be a controlled ag aggression. Yeah, yeah, and it could also be something uh, of a plan to say, I need to get better at this in order to make my strength become decisive more often against this man here. I need to be better at what he's good at. Oh, super. Great awareness from the left-handed Kento Momota. And he has a four-point advantage here in the opening game against Anthony Ginting. Seven opening game. Nice block. Sarah from Ginting. Just seemed to rush the serve, almost yeah. as if he'd changed his mind. Yeah. Yeah. Early on, after that lift was hit by Momota, that it was going to go long, yeah. he absolutely strolled back. Yeah. Nice. When you play as much as they do, when you practice as much as they do, you get a fantastic feeling for when the shuttle speed looks a little bit too much. Trademark, beautiful movement back in court, having been at the net. Beautiful jump by the time he's landed, his body weight is coming forward. Look at that! Poetry in motion. disappointed with that one seemed to be in good position and he's normally got exceptional good touch 
uh, at the net. This man has two. from above the shuttle looked as if he was going to play the hard push Ginting and then look at that delicate little touch hit the top of the tape and trickled over wonderful I don't know what to make of this so far, this match. You know, I, I simply can't say where is Anthony Ginting right now. We saw him play in this at this pace against Victor Axis, and, and he was uh, not a factor in terms of winning the match. Victor simply outplayed him. But here, is he sort of um, being economical? Because we see him like here with this smash that he missed suddenly pick up pace and he's actually scored some points with only one or two shots where he had to inject pace or is it a more long term that he wants to be able to play a better basic game is it something that's suited for this arena here or will we see him when he change ends in a more um, uh, speedy uh, edition Just wide. There is another theory. Yeah. And that's that uh, in the tie on Wednesday evening against well, Denmark, 15. he Ginting would have known he would have had to play really well to, to, beat, Axelson. to beat Axelson. And even so they lost 3-2, Indonesia knew they were going to top the group and they had two matches where they were overwhelming favorites exactly so so why waste yep. energy yep. in trying to beat Axelson when you know your team's going to qualify yeah good point Interesting reaction after the rally, the clenched fist there from Momota. Doesn't often show a lot of emotion. It's gone wide. Little shake of the head from uh, Hendy Saputro. Was going yeah. wide. That has definitely. Just put one of them to let it drop, otherwise, they would end up <laughs> in the kit boxes. Mm. Momota just looking up at the giant screen, hoping to see whether well, he should have left his. Whether he should have left his. I agree with you, Joe. I thought it would have wide.
Yeah. Nice smash straight down the line. Olympic champion there, Tuntoy Ahmad. Champion in the mixed doubles, of course. Yeah, that's a super shot. Pinpoint accuracy. The water jumping a little bit up and down, trying to loosen up a little bit. And that presumably stains his nerves. Yeah. But I think he feels that um, when Ginting picks up speed and attacks, it's not so nice as if he plays at consistently high speed. Then Momosa sort of um, adapts to that pace that um, Ginting is playing with. It's more difficult for him if he doesn't know when it comes. That's short. Yeah. That was a gift for Ginting. This one here. Short. 17, Look, he leaps from the base position there in the centre of the court to smash straight down the line. So just two points in it now. Once again, he leapt from the base position in the centre of the court this time to what we call the round-the-head position. That was magnificent. Four straight points. And just one point the deficit. Well, if Momota was nervous before, he'll be even more nervous right now. 16, 17. Play. Fist from Momota and a little bit of shouting as well. Look at this. Uh, but that goes down as a poor miss by Ginting in my book. But you're right, interesting reaction from Momota.
Oh, such an important rally and such a good smash to finish it from Anthony Ginty. shots for that rally and you could have heard a pin drop in the stadium Thank you. there's one for the last seven points ginting and the only two he's lost was those big misses at the net so momentum with uh, with ginting at the moment oh. that's his second service error and what a time to do it my goodness me Gifts, game point opportunities to Japan and Kento Momota. shot oh I think he touched the net Ginting well Momota wins the rally anyway because the string broke with Anthony Ginting but I think Anthony Ginting's follow through on this net shot he touched the yeah. net he did yeah. wasn't called by the umpire but the opening game justice in the end because Kinto Momota won the points anyway in the opening game, 21-17 in 30 minutes. あの、<笑><笑> Two coaches there. So the reigning world champion, Kento Momota, getting this second game underway, having already won the first. Now, presumably, Steen, Ginting, he was now playing with the slight drift. Yeah. So his clears and his lifts, he's got to be very careful on. Yeah. 
so we might see him playing a little more attacking style. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see that. No? No, I don't think he's um, he's got the pace at the moment. It's almost good enough, though, but um, that's what we've seen from his near side of the court as well, that when the chance occurs, then he uses his speed and um, creates Tremendous problems for uh, Kento Momota. He's had too many big errors, got a bad start to the first game and made at least three big errors when um, when the first game was about to finish. Um, can he cut down on those? Then, uh, then he's got a chance of coming back. Oh, that one was short. Just wide. Oh, challenge. First challenge of this many singles. There it was out. Well done, line judge. Susie Susanti, former Olympic champion, former world champion, former All England champion, former world number one. Now involved in guiding the Indonesian team. Why? I think she's the uh, manager. Pit manager, yep. Yeah. That's a great lift. Oof, even better smash from Momota. Four, one. Yeah, you were talking earlier on in the women's singles about the back foot being on the back yeah, line. Yeah. Shows it's a good length from your opponent. His back foot was on that back line. It was. Oh, super. That was all about angle from Ginting. Fast drop. The reverse slice. Oh, that's going wide. Yeah. One of the things that um, is Three, worth noting four. is that we've also seen very, very few changes of pace from Kento Momota. Basically, only that smash just a little while ago is the only one that I've sort of paid attention to. Um, so. 
I don't know if he's got an extra gear. He hasn't used yet. Yeah, good rally for Ginting. Well, it's fascinating you should mention that because yesterday morning, Morton and I were watching uh, the tie against Malaysia. Yeah. And we, yes, and Morton was talking about the fact that comparing Mamolta to Lin Dan at his best and Lee Chong Wei at his best. And he said that he doesn't yet have the same ability to inject pace within the rally that those two former greats did when they were in their prime. That's what Morton felt. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I feel we've seen... I mean, if this is 100% um, of Momota, then I, I agree. I, I, I'm not sure it is 100% of Momota. I, I feel it's been a long while since we've seen 100% of him. And that's, of course, also some uh, cause for concern. Last year, he didn't play in the All England because he got a little bit injured in the German Open after he played a norm enormous number of tournaments coming back uh, after Mamota. ban. He didn't play last year. He didn't play the All England because his ranking wasn't high enough. Couldn't get in. A, a, year, sure? a year ago, he was playing the Vietnam International Challenger. He played German Open. And then I think he, anyway. he was promoted from the qualifying for the ah, German Open. OK. But he, his ranking wasn't high enough. OK. Um, but at that time, I felt he actually um, played sharper when he was playing there in the um, uh, first six months of 2018. So a fantastic final in uh, Malaysia against uh, Li Chung Wei. And we've seen those strappings on his uh, right... Um, his left knee. Yeah, his left knee and, um, and left uh, calf. Missed it. It's just wide. And the run of five straight points comes to an end. And do you think it's niggling injury problems that are... I think, I think there is more or less all the time. And if he can't get rid of that, then I think maybe he's um, shown his hand a little bit too early in terms of Olympics, I must say. Uh, I, I'm thinking about it with the Japanese team at the moment. They came into this tournament as top seeds. They had the uh, overall most points Thank in all you, five categories when the draw was made for the knockout stage. Yeah, yeah. there is the strapping that you've been talking about. So, yeah. so over. When the draw for the knockout stage was made, five, it was six. China who was... It, it's done for from the recent most recent ranking. And it was China that was the number one seed. Japan has been dominating last year in women's doubles. We, I think they won 16 tournaments uh, on the world tour. This year they've only won three. Yeah. I think they might have showed their hand too early. The other nations are looking at what, did, what does it take to beat them. Look how early Ginting's taking it at the net. Commanding the rally, the Indonesian. Look at that. Wonderful from Anthony Ginting. Perfect net shot. I have a different theory, Seven, though. Five. Going back to your point. Let's hear it. I think after the World Tour Finals in Guangzhou at the end of last year, I think the entire Japanese team went through a very, very heavy training period. And I think uh, that has affected their sharpness at the beginning of this year. Yeah, because they have the last chance before the Olympics. That was that period. To have a heavy training yeah. session because once the Olympic qualifying period has started, which it's now done, it's a long, long, long build-up yeah. to the Olympic Games. There's first, no first other to qualify and then to play well. Exactly. 
by now. Well left. That's great judgment. Seven all. And he doesn't get many of those back. Anthony Ginting. Direct errors from uh, Momota. There's not a whole lot of those. Yep. He is moving much faster now, Anthony Ginting. Momota doesn't really believe it, but it, it's been hit a number of times. It's like he... There's a little deception on it somewhere. Before he just... Nine, seven. Pushes it away. And he's stranded there, Momota. Can't see that on the court. On the yeah, but uh, Momota looking at Park Jubong and Yusuke Nakanishi after that point there. Yeah, well played. Consider he was one four down in this second game. Eight, you talked ten. at the end well. of the end of the second that actually the momentum was more with Ginting. Yeah. I think it's certainly with Ginting right now. Good night shot. Left. Nine, ten. He seems to have to work so hard for his points, Ginting. You know, the big leap and the jump smash or getting into the net so quickly to play the little hold and flick. And then he gives away soft points. Yeah, that, that's, that's what we discussed. But Again, if it's if it's inside, it's a really really good shot. He's mm. got it with his backhand side to Momota's forehand side. Good flick serve. Good return too. It's ten all. Ten well, so much for my theory about the momentum being with Ginting. Yeah, but but I think we've seen Momota trying to take the control of the rallies. A bit more here, two of the last three rallies he's um, attacked, or if not attacked, then at least played downwards, so um, it wasn't so dangerous for him. Yeah, good angle, and on a run of four straight Eleven, points, ten, it's Kento Momota who has the one-point advantage here at the mid-game interval. 
of the second game. So just one point in it, 11-10, second game, having already won the first, Momota. Clever from Momota, that was just a half smash. No pace on the shuttle for Ginting to feed off on his defensive shot. is definitely starting to play more downwards, more controlling shots, playing the front court more. He's not clearing as much as um, we saw him in the first game. So you could say that Ginting's basic game has, has he, in my opinion, proved good enough to um, wait for the opportunities. Now his defense, his front, front court skills is being tested. Can he do the same? when uh, Momota is uh, focused on uh, keeping the shuttle down on the of the time. Twelve, Momota's defense have not at all gotten in place. I mean, when Ginting attacks and picks up speed at the same time he's scoring, sometimes even on the first shot, Quick going yeah. forward from the motor. Suddenly, we haven't seen that all match. No, but here I think this chance Ginting so takes over. is not good enough to attack. And One this is what happens. Whoa. If he takes the chance where it's not there, then Momota will counter-attack him immediately. Oh, oh. 
He's got to force Morta to uh, play in accurate shots. of his speed hinting took it earlier enough well well it's now eight of the last ten points to Kento Momota I think ever since I sent the momentum <laughs> was with Ginting but that's what we see I mean one player has the momentum so the other player of course looks for what what can I do then and I think this match is really interesting in itself but it also makes the coming matches in the tournaments to come between these two players highly interesting in terms of world championship and uh, olympics missed it Three game 13. matches between these two players have been won by Kento Momota. Yep. All five of them. All five of them. Five. To me, that's a sign that Ginting sort of loses his stamina when the match goes long. I think the Indonesian um, men's singles team, they have a strategy that should make him able to maintain enough stamina to challenge Momota even in a three game match. Just wide, he's challenging. I know if he's wrong here, he hasn't got any challenges out. left in this second game. But this is a crucial moment. I think it's a right moment to challenge because it yeah. was awfully close. And I'm not going to predict because I've not got no. one right so far. Oh, he caught the yeah. line, what a great challenge. And that's exactly what he hoped for. That yeah. It, most of the shuttle looked to be out, but he just caught the line. Just clipped it. 14, 15. Play. Play now. Play, play now. Brilliant. And Anthony Ginting is back level. 15 all. Wide. Yeah. He's missed too many of those forehand crosses. He, ha he has, but so I also over. felt that there was an injection of pace, movement-wise, from Momota. Yeah. 
He, I thought he had much quicker trying to come forward to the net. But I think he feels that it's now if he's going to win this match. Be ready. He should invest all his energy in uh, sealing it in straight games. Cross court, and it is all about the angle. Amazing. There's a little deception. Because I think Mamoto was anticipating that, and he still couldn't get there. No. And he's also hit them straight down the line once in a while. clock about to tick over the hour mark 16 all in the second game 16 all from uh, Omota. This was uh, in the first game where it was the same situation where Ginting committed a couple or three rather big mistakes. That is quality badminton. 18, 16. Wow. Inside of the line. You don't get any better than that. point cushion for Momota. Both players just jumping <laughs> up and down on the spot. Trying to loosen the nerves, loosen the muscles. This is such a big point. Oh, and that's brilliant from Ginting. Totally unexpected. Played with precision. The backhand. And Ginting finds the line. Look at this. Perfect. Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Lucky Nick called for the left-hander, would you believe it, at this stage of the game. Under pressure on his backhand side, plays the backhand and gets the lucky neck cord. How cruel is that for Anthony Ginting? Serve. Oh, that's quick going forward. And he did that with a broken string. Well, I think he must have known that with his overhead, his smash, that he broke the strings of his racket. So he, he knew had to go all out. he had to go all out. But that's great control with broken strings. My goodness me. Point opportunities. Two of them for a 2 1 lead in this semi final tie. 20, match point 18. Play. about placement but the full wrist service drop shot over. on the service return there yeah 19 20 one match point saved one more remains for japan opportunity and look at the reaction from the reigning world champion Kento Momota his record in Sudaman Cup and Thomas Cup matches is phenomenal it's now six 17 wins and no losses he has put Japan just one match away from the final here at the Sudaman Cup in Nanning. Okay. Well, team competitions, Momota just seems to deliver. 21 17, 21 19. The margin of his victory today against Anthony Ginting. An hour and six minutes. And one has to feel for Ginting because there was a very lucky net cord from Momota to take him to his first match point opportunity. But there was nothing lucky about that final shot. Look what it means to the world champion to put his team, Japan, into the lead here in the semi-final tie. 21-17, 21-19 in an hour and six minutes. Oh, 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 oh. 